YouTube, it's your boy OGT Man, and today we got the 31 seconds that destroyed Patty Pimblett's career. Now I heard he was a good fighter, no cap. I heard he would he be throwing them things, be 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 nice. So, but yeah, just like that Chinese dude who hugged that lady, and he didn't want to hug her no more after that because all the hate he got. Yeah, uh, let's hope it's not like that or something. Well, judging by the type, you know what, let's just get started. The entire world was supporting Paddy Pimblett until just 31 seconds of talking revealed he was actually super unlikable. His rapid social media growth subsequently disappeared while the comments became so brutal he couldn't even handle it. I can't say anything without people jumping on it. The nasty comments get to you. I don't stand into my social media anymore. Everyone quickly decided Paddy wasn't the next big thing, which is all people could talk about during his rise to fame. This article for example wrote Paddy Pimblett is the next big thing and has the potential to be as big as Conor McGregor and it's not difficult to see how the media drew this conclusion Paddy had a similar kind of confidence this is my destiny I've got the personality I've got the look the new kings here lad. with comments describing him as a likable mix of humility and arrogance this was put on full display when he'd make a YouTube channel gaining hundreds of thousands of views by vlogging although it was on the topic of food that he garnered the most attention Paddy's fighting weight was 155 pounds, yet in between matches he'd ballooned to over 200. So you're 200 right now, what do you get to when you fight? I weigh in at 155. Way. The most I've weighed is like 211. Earning the nickname Paddy the Fatty instead of Paddy the Batty. Hilarious how every UFC fighter has a unique personality. Paddy being an undercover fat guy is the funniest. Do you ever miss the six pack when you uh, blow up between fights? I'd rather be fat and happy than ripped and like these people who are ripped all year round aren't happy. Not Photos such as this one therefore went extremely viral. God damn. God damn. That motherfucker look like a blue whale. God, Jesus. I don't know how you can be fat and happy. I, I really don't know. I'm going to have to see how you can be fat and happy. I just, me, I got to be able to enjoy my life, eat whatever I want, and still look good. But I don't, I don't eat if, it, if I got to look like that, though. Let's get back to the video, my bad. Which Paddy used to his advantage to attract even more attention. All of his most popular content was on gaining or losing weight, which was funny because he'd always end up making weight, not to mention he was also winning his fights easily. Paddy won his first three UFC matches, two of which during the first round, with an impressive total career record of 19 wins and only three losses. This added to the hype around Paddy becoming champion, although no one seemed to realize he hadn't even fought anyone ranked in the top 15. Paddy Pimblett is a lot of marketing and little skill for MMA. Paddy himself was still an unranked fighter, yet millions believed he'd be the next UFC champ purely because he'd made a couple of funny videos. Well, Paddy was given the chance to prove himself when scheduled a fight against Jared Gordon and having just signed a million dollar Barstool sports deal Barstool sports, man. Best company in the world. It seemed Paddy's public image was better than ever before. However, just two days prior to he and Jared's fight, Paddy began to make some critical errors. He uploaded a podcast speaking with Dana White, where it was obvious his arrogance was becoming overbearing. I just create better content than all of you. It's mad people say, oh, he's getting pushed. He's, it's not my numbers are just better than yours. This manifested a call out of journalist Ariel Helwani. I hate all these journalists, like Ariel Helwani in particular. Going on a four minute rant about him being a terrorist person. He's a maggot. He, he's a lizard. Paddy's rant seemed kind of fun and edgy until Ariel responded destroying Paddy in return. Everything that was said was a lie. It's lie after lie after lie after lie. Paddy made the claim that Ariel was fired from every job he had. Every decent job he's had he's been sacked from. Yet Ariel explained that he hadn't been fired from any. Got sacked from every decent job that I have. Let's talk about the jobs that I've had. Even displaying a tweet by his former boss who wrote, we had hoped to have Ariel continue continue in that role and made him an offer to remain with ESPN. Next, Paddy tried to insult Ariel by saying he wasn't a journalist. You're a content creator, Ariel. You're not a journalist. Stop lying. To which Ariel calmly responded. You're not a content creator. You're, you're not a journalist. <laughs> 
The, the, this use of the term content creator, is this supposed to be an insult? I've been trying to create content since 2006. If you're going to try to insult me by calling me a content creator, great. That's the worst thing you could say about me. Awesome. Yes, I'm a content creator and pretty damn proud of it. But Paddy's worst attempt at insult was saying Ariel should pay for his interviews. He uses fighters for clicks, uses fighters to make money. Get your doll out, Ariel. Start paying people for these interviews. What, you make thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds on Ariel responded by stating, Does Joe Rogan pay his guests? Did Oprah pay her guests? Did Larry King pay his guests? That's not how this works. Journalists make money. Yeah, we make money. Of course. Isn't that the whole point? Spending one hour and 15 minutes total dismantling all of Patty's arguments. Ariel came with all the evidence like a lawyer. Outstanding performance. This is how you absolutely obliterate someone. No smack talk, just facts. Ariel's video gained 29,000 likes and only 900 dislikes likes, while Patty's initial call out received a much less favorable ratio, as well as comments such as, lost all respect for Patty, throwing Ariel under the bus just to get brownie points from Dana. Patty crying that Ariel makes money off fighters while sitting across from Dana was the most hilarious thing. Who would have thought Patty's biggest knockout loss would come at the hands of Ariel Helwani, weakening Patty's image before his biggest fight so far. Patty waltzed into the match as confident as ever, with the audience expecting he'd beat Jared Gordon easily, although this isn't what would happen. Paddy spent the entire fight eating punch after punch from Jared, and by the end it seemed obvious that Jared Gordon had won. Out of 24 scores by the media, 23 called Jared the winner, and in a Twitter poll asking the public who'd won, 80% believed it was Jared. However, by some miracle, the judges ruled in Paddy's favor, completely surprising everybody. Huge L for our judges on that one. How? Why the judges did my guy J Flash Gordon MMA like that? Everyone in the our building was like, damn, Patty lost. The entire world was quickly turning on Patty, which he could have turned around with a humble post fight interview, although over the course of only 31 seconds, Patty instead did the opposite. Joe began the interview by stating, I'm here with the winner, Patty the Batty. Patty, that was a close one, to which Patty responded with, No, it wasn't. That wasn't close. He just controlled me in the third. But you know what? Joe, have you consulted me manager and seen how much you're paying me for this interview? To which Patty was met with silence. Joe then continued, you don't think it was a close fight at all? To which Patty responded, no, not at all. I won the first two rounds and then coasted in the third. I knew I was two rounds up, so I didn't want to do nothing dangerous and risk losing the fight. I knew for a fact I'd won the first two rounds pretty easily and demanding fight of the night as he walked off the stage definitely didn't help anything. I can't believe Patty wanted fight of the night. He already got gift of the night. What an arrogant guy. To say it wasn't close after he... So, wow. So, that's how you fucked yourself over. By gloating off of a judge's decision. When they when the people who watched clearly, literally, clearly said you got your ass beat. I didn't watch the fight. Uh, I don't know what reason I had to watch the fight for. It, to me, it, it wasn't going to be good to me. But the fact that you was literally getting bing, 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 bing. Everybody on Twitter, everybody in the stadium was like, oh, damn, Patty lost. And then they seen that you won. It was like, how? And then instead of being humble about it or being whatever, you decided to sit up there and gloat about winning by judge's decision? Really? Now, granted, I heard, I can see how anybody else would, like, if, you know, the fight was close, but the fight wasn't close at all and wasn't even in your favor, and yet you still be right there gloating? Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Scott gifted the decision. This was honestly in the top five worst robberies I've seen, and his arrogant attitude after it is just making him look like a pleb. Paddy then went into a press conference where his arrogance became even worse. Everyone's got an opinion, lad. The opinions are assholes. You know what I mean? Everyone's got one. I know I won that fight, simple as. I deal in facts, lad, and everyone talks about me, lad. That's how they, they stay relevant.
people mention me. And despite Jared Gordon himself tweeting, I was robbed and everyone knows it, Patty still went into more interviews refusing to show humility. The other person won. You don't see that at all from any others. No. The other problem was that people had realized Patty wasn't as skilled as they thought. There was a real belief after that fight, okay, Patty's not as good as we thought he was. Now sure, he could easily knock me out in under three seconds, but talks of him being champion were still a couple of years too early. Patty looked like a journeyman. He's clearly not ready for the top 15. I could care less if I ever see him in a fight again, and apparently neither did the rest of Patty's fans, as he began to lose thousands of followers per month. Additionally, people uploaded videos such as Patty the Batty getting rocked by unranked fighters, and Patty Pimblet all losses in MMA, conveniently just days after Patty ruined his image. Patty then began to realize he'd made a massive mistake. The amount of times I've been told I lost that fight, the last year has been quite hard to be honest, lad. The amount of people that have just been giving me hell on socials and online and stuff like that, know what I mean? I was the low hanging fruit that it was easy to to jump on the hate bandwagon at the time, so everyone did it. And all of a sudden, this statement... I'm always gonna have this media and this big bubble around me whenever I turn up to fight... ...was looking a lot less likely. He believed that his next fight could fix all his problems... ...when I beat Tony Ferguson, lad, everyone will jump back on the bandwagon. Although this didn't really happen. You see, Paddy was scheduled to fight Tony Ferguson, who'd lost all six of his previous matches. Paddy therefore recognised that there wasn't much glory in beating him... ...when I win, people are gonna be like, oh, I was on a six fight losing seat anyway, he's finished anyway. Although ending the fight with a win was definitely better than losing. This time, Paddy gave a much more humble post-fight interview where he's one of the toughest men out there, hats off to him, he's an absolute legend. Leading to comments such as, officially off the Paddy hate train. Couldn't help to notice how determined he was and humility goes a long way. Now, welcome to the UFC, Paddy. He therefore gained back 300,000 followers, although it didn't restart the hype train like Paddy might have wanted. Others have suggested it feels like the spark has completely left him, although at the age of 29, he still has plenty of time to prove himself, albeit now with a much more grounded perspective. I'll probably never answer questions again in a post-fight interview about the actual fight until I've watched it back. In my own head, I've done well in that fight, and then I've watched it back, and it's a completely different fight to what I had in mind. Hey, that's, that's, what, that's what getting humbled by the media will do to you. That's what getting humbled will do to you in general. You know, thank you, Sunny V2, for this amazing, amazing breakdown. Thank you. But, um, yeah, this is the end of the video. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Let's see these. Sunny never fails to inform me about how some I never knew <laughs> became hated. Just because Batty is advocate is advocating men's health awareness doesn't mean you constructively criticize him and you're not a piece of shit for doing it. You know your career is cooked when you end up on one of the two's videos. <laughs> People also forget that Patty isn't some 24, 25 year old kid. He's almost 30 still trying to break the top, which is I'm back in the old UFC days. But the kids these days been training longer and better. Damn, that is true. Well, hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, come subscribe. It's your boy OGT Man signing out. Yeah, dude.